it is very normal for me to use two creamer packets. I'm going to attempt to only use one and see if there's much of a taste difference. You can tell I've already popped the top and procured it down to the bottom there. Insert the cup. Be gentle. Uh oh. I guess I could just throw it away. I don't know why I'm showing this. Everyone, Yadam the Woo here. Another day, another indoor episode. Something that I really am not getting used to. It is does not. It messes with my head quite a bit. I am used to being outdoors, traveling, seeing things, getting the fresh air. But for now, inside these four, six, nine, inside a bunch of walls. I guess the the shell. Shell the house before walls. Anyway, today I'm going to be focusing on the process, the camera equipment, and how I go about putting these little things together. I've been doing it for over 10 years on this platform, but I would say within the last three or four on a prominent, consistent upload schedule, I've been doing it the same way. And I figured I'd just share the info with you if you're interested. Just nod your head yes. I'm inviting you to join me. I think I prefer the two, but it's still pretty good with one. Drinkable. Shall you? I know my form's not really the best, but I'm hoping over time as I get a little stronger and drop some weight, I'll be able to go all the way to the floor and pull the arms in a bit. everything. Trust me, I completely understand that is not the most attractive thing nor exciting thing to watch, but I have to put just a little snippet in. It, it keeps me motivated. When I, when I see myself doing that, watching it back, I think, goodness gracious, I am out of shape. Back in the day, I used to use my cell phone to film with, and I still do occasionally, but now I just mostly use it for editing. I'll get to that uh, a little bit later. I have a few different cameras I will use, mostly starting with the one I use less frequently is the Canon 70D DSLR. And you can see over here on the corner I have this little, it's like a wind stopper. You can make this pretty much out of anything. You can get it at a supply store. You, know, you just go in buy a little of this carpety type of item and Velcro. If you look down in there, there is some Velcro. You cut the Velcro to where one side of the stickiness goes against the side of the camera itself. You do have to put it around the microphone hole, however, it completely defeats the purpose. So you put a layer above the hole, below the hole, and then you 
put the other side of the sticky on this little fluffy part and then stick it on so the noise gets through the fluffiness but the wind is stopped and it helps considerably. You can also buy different ones you know at some of the camera supply shops that are already already made like similar to this which is another camera that I have which is a mirrorless. This is the Canon I always want to say A6, but in reality it's a EOS M6. I always want to say A6, but M6. But back to these little fluffy things. Sometimes you can find these online and other camera gear places. So this, this is something you don't have to go to a craft store to make. They already come in. The circle goes around the microphone. I think there might be two microphones on the top of this. You put the circle of Velcro around it, and then you stick these little items right on top so when you're out in the gusty wind especially like in the desert or on the seashore it really helps another thing i like about this particular model is that you can attach this lens to it which is a wide angle and a not a zoom it's just a wide angle lens a 10 18 which means you can pull way back so if i was in like this at an 18 and i wanted to go to a 10 without even shifting my body or taking a step back, it would whoop, go back to about there, which is really great if you're like right up on someone who wants to be interviewed and there's a crowd behind you, you cannot back up, or if you're trying to get an entire frame rate of a building. However, I am very tempted and it becomes a little kind of obnoxious in a way because I am holding on to this and as I'm filming, I will constantly be doing this just out as like a habit so the footage becomes not very stable and over time I have tried to like not touch this so it's a lot easier for me to use the camera I'm using now which is the Canon G7X Mark II that is what I am filming with because I do not have that temptation to constantly be using this as a pointer I could just point with my finger instead of kind of shifting back and forth with that, but I do this, I use this sometimes, but not too often anymore. Not that I ever really attach this, but this goes up to a 250. It's not, not a super zoom, but it's a pretty good zoom. I use this at Mount Rushmore, put the camera on a tripod, and kind of just went all the way up to the faces of the presidents. The only downfall of this is you can't have to be not only standing perfectly still, you really need a tripod if you're going all the way to 250. I've only used this a, a handful of times, but it does come in handy, you know, occasionally for certain for certain events. It has the flip LCD screen, which you could turn towards you or away from you as well. I also like this one because it, there's really no audio issues with like buffering or making little popping sounds on the P's and the T's. No issues either with the M6 when it comes to audio. Pretty much crystal clear. The only real problem I have with this model is when I'm focusing on something, even outdoors in good light, when I shift quickly, like if I was to go over to this one in a fast motion, it would go out of focus. So I have to really hold the frame really, really well. And it's not very good in low light as comparison to the one I'm holding at the moment. All three of these run on SD cards, which is when you're filming, that's where all the footage is stored on. This one slides into the side. That one goes down into the bottom, also the battery compartment that goes in. I use a lot of batteries. Most of the time I just carry them around in these Ziploc bags. So you have one camera's batteries there. I have maybe like four or five for the M6, the G7X. Some of them are on the charger, but normally I have like seven or eight at one time. And I carry an extra SD card constantly in case one is corrupt or if one gives out or one gets filled up, which rarely happens, but I do carry an extra one just in case. And if I'm shifting cameras, if I have this bag in my pocket, I will take an extra SD card from that one, put it in there, etc., etc. And here is the third camera's batteries. There are, I got a lot of batteries. Three bags full. And these aren't even all of them. Some of them are on the chargers. It's a constant struggle, more or less, to keep these things charged because the longer you have them, and they're, they're not inexpensive, so you really have to invest wisely. You don't want to buy the cheap off-brands. 
too much. I've discovered by getting the real brand, they last a little longer. And as it goes on, if you have months and years, or even longer than that, they don't even hold a charge quite as long. So you need multiples. You gotta have a, a back catalog to carry around with you, just in case. Switched over to my iPhone for now, just to get these couple, this little segment to show the G7X Mark II. They have created a new model since I purchased this one. However, I always, I still stick with the Mark II for now. Maybe one day I will upgrade. It is pointed down at the baggies and the other cameras. This is the majority, I would say, 75% of the time of everything that you watch recently in the last couple of years is filmed on this. This is a Manfrotto tripod. I like it because it's very stable. It does not buckle, it does not bend. It's not going anywhere when it's like kind of stanchioned onto the ground. And it has this little button where you can shift it. You can see how that just shifted. You can also see I've added the wind protector to this one as well. And the, the lens extends in. So when you turn it off, that lens will go completely flat and closed as opposed to the others like this one, which just kind of stays the same. This one just kind of tucks away and hides from everything when the power's off. It's also very subtle, but I feel like the audio is not as strong and poignant when using the phone. I'm not sure if you picked up on that or not. When you're done and want to start editing, what I do is I pull the SD card out of the side or the bottom, whichever model you're using. And then you procure it into the bottom of this mechanism, which sometimes you can find at stores, Best Buy, occasionally, randomly, luck of the draw will have them, but better off just getting them offline. It's pretty awesome. Just, just sticks in there, and then this goes in the bottom of your phone, dump it into your camera roll, and iMovie it, or whatever your other preference for editing software is, away. It's rather simple, honestly. For me, it's just muscle memory. I've been doing it for so long, but you open the app, hit create project. It gives you the option for trailer or movie. And I click on movie, dump the files in. So I'm recording this Hulk Hogan hockey Voorhees mask. And then hit stop of Wilson. It's a little out of focus. Just touch the screen and it goes into focus. Wilson wearing some headphones. And there goes Creed T. Hit record. Obviously, I'm going to be dumping the footage in from my phone. But you could do it from the SD card as well, which is what I normally do. And after they're all put into iMovie, you, I just scroll through. It automatically does. It automatically does this little deal where you have to f kind of take the transition which fades in. I'm not really too big on the fade ends. So I just do that, level them all off, detach each piece of audio. So for example, I do that, then I hit detach, go over here, hit stop. So I'm recording this Hulk Hogan hockey Voorhees mask. Yes, I am. And so I take this, hit stop, and I just kind of fade that over, take this, hit fade, shift it in so that there's no hit stop. dramatic buffer there. Hit stop of Wilson. See, and then it cuts right into that. Hit stop of Wilson. That's a little out of focus. Just touch the screen. It goes into focus. Wilson wearing some headphones. He is. Slide that over. Take this. Fade it out so there's nothing abrupt headphones. cuts. Hit record. Then I do the same with this. Ba -ba. This is obviously just an example. Some headphones. Hit record. Sometimes you have to just kind of make it so there's no dead space there. Headphones. Hit record. Here we go. Some headphones. Hit record. Obviously, I'm... You go to the end. Okay. Take that. Fade it out. 
Then I watch the whole thing back. Obviously, this is very short, but sometimes I'll have 15, 20, 30 minutes. I always rewatch the whole thing to make sure it turns out how I want it to. So I'm recording this Hulk Hogan hockey Voorhees mask. You never want to glitch. You never want the audio to be off. Head stop of Wilson. See? Bam. Right into it. Focus. Just touch the screen. Look at that guy. Wilson. Wilson wearing some headphones. He is. Hit record. Yep, there he is, Creed T. Obviously, I'm going to be dumping the footage in from my phone. Yep, I did. But you can do it from the SD card as well. It's very true, you can. Do. Okay. And that's it. Now, it has been one heck of a long time since I sat in front of my compu computer and edited. The last ones most likely were Forrest Gump filming locations and National Lampoon's Gorn, those three filming locations, which had been quite a while ago. Now, I do use this to surf the internet, research stuff. By the way, this is my office. But in all reality, nearly everything that you have watched that I've ever put out is uploaded and edited on this mechanism. No, not salacious. No, this, this mechanism. Keep in mind, though, that everyone has their own way of doing things. This is just my way. Use whatever you are more comfortable with, whether it be a camera, a phone, GoPro, or other recording device, and edit what you want to edit on. Keep my printer down on the floor underneath the desk, kind of tucked away. Have the wireless mouse here next to the also wireless keyboard. And you might be asking, why do you have a keyboard when you have a laptop right there? That keyboard stopped working about two or three years ago, and I haven't bought a new laptop yet. So I just attached this, and it kind of attaches up to it wirelessly, and I use this. And I always have some kind of air circulating in all the rooms, this one included. Gotta, gotta stay cool. I rarely run the AC. I probably run the air conditioner the entire time I've lived in Southern California, maybe a dozen times. It's just something I really, really never utilize. I just open the windows and run the fans. Someone made me this a long time ago. It's like a drink holder. And I put my, uh, it's like a coaster. Put my beverage on there. Sometimes I'll have my coffee or juice or soda or whatnot i'll put it right there as i work in here and speaking of other things people made me when i did a thousand vlogs in a row that was right there someone gifted that to me it's a version of big the foot wearing a very sweet jacket the foot 1000 days in a row hard to believe i went five years 1911 in a row without missing a day Ah, good times. Oh, look who's over here. There's a stranger, a familiar face, though, to many. You woo him, Lincoln here. Looking upward from the seat, I am greeted by a couple hats. Got an old-school Epcot Center cap there on the far left. And then an Epcot 35 in the middle next to Hogan. And that's my Adam the Woo 100,000 subscriber. Congratulations. Little placard. Right there on the right. I never got one for the Daily Woo. I kind of dropped the ball on that and never got a hold of them and gave them an address. One thing I personally like about editing on my phone is I can just kind of lounge around, just kind of stretch out either on the love seat or the couch. When I had my RV, could edit in the RV, just laying around, could drive for a while, sit in the front seat, you know, edit for a while, put the phone back down, continue to drive, same with the van. Or if I'm out and about somewhere, let's say I'm at a park, I could just sit on a bench and edit for a while, put some headphones in, or in the comfort of your own house, just relax. At some point when I'm allowed to go back out to stores, and shop for non-essentials. I need something for this above the couch. This area here is barren. This is what happens when you are stuck indoors for a long period of time. You rearrange the cupboards. Still got plenty of canned goods. 
I still got quite a bit in the fridge left. I haven't been eating a ton. I've been eating, but I haven't been eating a ton. Like I'm rationing. Still haven't touched a Mountain Dew in, since I've been back in California. They're just sitting there. They're calling my name, but I haven't been tempted for whatever reason. However, speaking of temptation, time to dive into a little more of this fruit tray. An assortment of goodness here. Some grapes, some cantaloupe, and kiwi, perhaps? As always, I've saved you a seat. Right next to me. That's good. The day the perfect camera comes out, one that is good on low light, one that has no sound issues, one that has no workarounds, the perfect for a little bit of a wide angle, a little bit of a good zoom, a little bit of nothing that is going to really hinder. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying because Honestly, there is no perfect camera that I have found yet. The one I am recording on. Let's pull the Canon G7X Mark II. It's probably my favorite. However, speaking of those sound issues, there is a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a trick, a little bit of a, a tip that I'm going to share with you. If you have used it, you will notice when you are talking. Let's say you just hit record and you start to talk, that your P's and your T's will do a real loud, like a buffer sound. So what I will do at the start of every clip, I will say what I'm going to say. The first two words a little louder than the rest of the clip, and as it continues. Let's say it's a 20 second clip. I will have no sound buffer issues. For example, welcome everyone. I'll say that twice. We'll say, welcome, welcome everyone. Adam the woo here. And then in the editing process, I will cut off those first couple of syllables. And then I will, so when people are watching me film, they think I'm absolutely insane. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. Helps keep you in a loop and update our future uploads here on this channel. Take it a step further. Ring that notification bell. If you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. See you in the next video. The vlog is over. A final footnote, these are units that no longer work. That screen doesn't close. This lens does not retract. And the other one, I'm not sure. Three that don't work. It just just have them in a box somewhere.